Hey everyone, and welcome to Thursday's Read Aloud. This Read Aloud is going to go through the election of 1860 reading. Um, it'll help explain some of the maps in it. And, and that's about it. Let's go ahead and get that open and get looking at it. Go ahead and go to Google Classroom under April 13th through 17, America in the 1850s. Go down to April 16th, the election of 1860. And go ahead and click on that document and open it up. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the directions. Read about the election of 1860 below. While you read, mark the text according to the guiding question. Underline main ideas and circle key terms that directly relate to or answer the guiding question. All right, so today. So today, our guiding question, what was the historical importance of the election of 1860? Okay, the election, the election of 1860 is considered one of the most important elections to happen in all of American history. Okay, it is the election that Abraham Lincoln ends up winning. And our goal today is to discover why is it so important? Why do we think it's so important? How did it impact our history? Okay, that is what you're looking for as we read. All right, let's not waste any time. Let's dive right in. The election of 1860. In the presidential election of 1860, the big question was whether the Union would continue to exist. Regional differences divided the nation. The issue of slavery split the Democratic Party. Northern Democrats supported the popular sovereignty. Remember, that's the idea that um, people in a territory could vote to be free or slave. Okay? Northern Democrats supported popular sovereignty. They nominated Stephen Douglas. You guys should remember him from the Lincoln-Douglas debates. The Southern Democrats vowed to uphold slavery. Their candidate was John C. Breckinridge. Moderates from the North and South formed the Constitutional Union Party. The Constitutional Unionists took no position on slavery. They chose John Bell as their candidate. The Republicans nominated Abraham Lincoln. They wanted to leave slavery alone where it existed, but also ban it in the territories. Still, white Southerners feared that a Republican victory would promote slave revolts as well as interfere with slavery. With Democrats divided, Lincoln won a clear majority of electoral votes. Voting followed sectional lines. Lincoln's name did not even appear on the ballot in most Southern states, so a lot of Southerners didn't even have the option to vote for Abraham Lincoln. He won every Northern state, however. So in effect, the more populous North outvoted the South. All right, that's a lot of information. Let's use the map to help us digest all of that, okay? So if we look here, red represents the states that voted for Abraham Lincoln. Um, this darker... Yes, darker blue stands for John C. Breckinridge, and actually I'm going to make this even bigger. There we go. That yellowish stands for John Bell, and the light blue stands for Stephen Douglas. Okay? So it's essentially the Republicans versus the Democrats, but the Democrats divide into three. Okay? You have the Southern Democrats supporting John Breckinridge, and that you can see that in the map down here. All these Southern states are voting for him. Okay? There's kind of a middle ground. Okay, a middle Southern, okay, middle Democrats, people from the North and from the South, they're like, no, nah, let's just leave this alone. We don't have any position on slavery. We don't want to really deal with it. Uh, we think there's other things going on. Okay, they support John Bell. And those are those states in the middle of everything here. They're kind of like, this is getting a little tense. Let's not, let's not start a fight. Okay, and then you have Stephen Douglas, who's from the North. Okay, and he just wants popular sovereignty, which we've covered to death by now. Hopefully you remember what that is. He only wins two states, New Jersey and Missouri. A lot of people weren't that big on popular sovereignty. And then you have Abraham Lincoln in the north, who is kind of proposing a new thing. He's like, all right, listen, where slavery is, it can stay, but it will not expand anymore. We're done expanding it. No more expansion of slavery into the territories. It's a done issue. It will stay where it is and go no further. And that's what he's saying. And he wins all of these states in the north. And kind of the big, big deal about this is that this is the first election where a president becomes president without winning a state in both the north and the south. Take a second, just look over this map. There's literally a line Lincoln only wins states in the North. No one in the South supports him. Heck, some of the people in the South couldn't even vote for him if they had wanted to. He wasn't on their ballot. Okay? And because of this, this is going to cause a lot of tension. All right, let's keep going. 
looking for compromise. The Republicans had promised not to stop slavery where it already existed. Yet, white Southerners did not trust the Republicans to protect their rights. On December 20, 1860, okay, so this is after the election has happened and Abraham Lincoln has won, South Carolina voted to secede from the Union, otherwise known as leaving it. In other and southern states, leaders debated the question of secession or withdrawal from the Union. Meanwhile, members of Congress tried to find ways to prevent it. Senator John Sinanen of Kentucky suggested a series of amendments to the Constitution. They included a protection of so slavery south of the Mason-Dixon line in all territories now had or hereafter acquired. Republicans rejected or refused to accept Crittenden's idea. They had just won an election by promising to stop slavery, slavery spread into any territories. Now we are told, Lincoln wrote, the government shall be broken up unless we surrender to those we have beat. Leaders of the South also rejected the plan. We spit on every plan to compromise, explained one of the Southern leaders. No human can save the Union, said another. Basically, at this point, both sides are saying we cannot agree on a compromise. There's nothing we can agree on anymore. That is what is going on here. Okay. Now, once you have read this, you guys can go ahead and jump into the notes, the note page. Okay, so come back here to the election of 1860, scroll down to the 1850 student note sheet, open that up, scroll on down, a little bit different today. Okay, first, you're going to look at this chart. Okay, the question is, who were the candidates and what did they want? Well, here are the candidates for you. Okay, and you're going to fill in what do they want. What did Stephen Douglas want? What did John C. Breckinridge want? What did John Bell want? And what did Abraham Lincoln want? Okay, fill that out. Then, who won the election? Why do you think he won the election? And then why was this important? What does this election matter? Why do we care? How did this change history? Okay, that's what you need to do for today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me over email or by texting me through Remind. Otherwise, thanks for listening and have a great rest of your day.